Emperor Wu of Northern Zhou, born Yuan Yong in 543 AD, was one of the most powerful and transformative rulers of early medieval China. The young Yuan Yong ascended to the throne in 560 AD, at the age of 17, taking the title Emperor Wu, meaning the Martial Emperor. From the very start of his reign, Emperor Wu sought to consolidate power and rebuild stability in a fractured empire. He curbed the influence of the powerful noble families and replaced them with loyal officials and capable commoners. He was an authoritarian. Emperor Wu's military campaigns defined his legacy. His greatest victory came in 577 CE, when he led a series of decisive offensives against the rival northern Qi dynasty. In just a few months, his armies swept across the north, capturing the Qi capital of Yeqing and bringing the entire northern half of China under northern Zhou control. Emperor Wu was equally ambitious in domestic policy. He worked to simplify the legal system, improve agricultural production, and implement a military agricultural colony system, known as Tunchen, which allowed soldiers to cultivate land and support themselves on the frontier. But his most controversial act came in 574 CE, when he issued an edict abolishing both Buddhism and Taoism throughout his empire. Monasteries were closed, monks and nuns were forced to return to secular life, and religious property was seized by the state. Emperor Wu's family ties linked him to some of the most important royal lineages of East Asia. He married Empress Ashina, daughter of a Turkic Khan, creating a crucial alliance with the steppe powers. His son, Yuan Yun, succeeded him as Emperor Xian of Northern Zhou. His daughter, Princess Yang Lihua, married Yang Jian, a high-ranking general who would soon found the Sui dynasty. Through this marriage, Emperor Wu became the maternal grandfather of Emperor Yang of Sui, linking his bloodline to the Northern Zhou and the great reunifying dynasty that followed. Emperor Wu died in 578 CE at the young age of 35, shortly after completing his campaign against Northern Qi. His death marked the beginning of instability. His successor, Emperor Xian, proved erratic and impulsive, and within a few years, Yang Jian took control of the empire. In 581 CE, Yang Jian proclaimed himself Emperor One of Sui, completing the reunification that Emperor Wu had begun. For this video, I gathered the raw genome of Emperor Wu from a 2024 study, Ancient Genome of the Chinese Emperor Wu of Northern Zhou. I ran him through my tools, such as Trait Predictor and BetaCalc, and through Harvard tools such as AdmixTools 1 and 2. According to FST analysis, the ethnicities Emperor Wu resembles most closely are Koreans, Han Chinese, and Japanese. According to this PADA model, the majority of Emperor Wu's ancestry comes from the Yellow River Neolithic farmers, although he does additionally have around 11% Amur River hunter-gatherer ancestry and 21% West Siberian ancestry. Breaking his ancestry down into ethnic groups which would be relevant to the time period he is from, he ends up being roughly 23% Xiongnu derived, derived with the rest of his ancestry aligning with the Han Chinese. Refer to the 2D PCA chart I created using my tool, Mageplot. I used an FST matrix table generated by AdmixTools1 for this analysis. Here you can notice the climb from pure East Asians, such as the Japanese and Koreans, to Central Asian populations, such as the Uzbeks, Mansi, and Bashkirs. Additionally, you can also note the climb from Siberian populations, such as Yakuts, which themselves fall on the East Asian Central Asian climb, to Native Americans, represented by Karishiana here, who are very divergent from Eurasians due to severe inbreeding and genetic drift. On this 2D PCA chart, Emperor Wu plots just east of Kazakhs. In fact, based on this plot, Kazakhs plot intermediate between Emperor Wu and Uzbeks. I made a phylogenetic tree based on this FST matrix. According to this phylogenetic tree, the Karishiana make a separate cluster on their own. The Russians fall into the general cluster of Eurasians, however, separate from the East Eurasians and populations with significant East Eurasian admixture. Central Asians all cluster within one another with Mansi, Uzbeks, and Bashkirs making one cluster, and Kazakhs together with Emperor Wu making another. The Siberians and East Asians make their own cluster. It is very revealing that Emperor Wu fell in the Central Asian cluster, and not in the Siberian or East Asian one. This is definitely due to his West Eurasian ancestry. I used my automatic population modeling tool within Mageplot to find divergent populations and model the rest as a mixture of these divergent populations. In this chart, I set the threshold for what is counted as divergent at 33% of the total populations. This means that at least one-third of all the populations will be counted as divergent. According to this plot, 
Emperor Wu is one of the divergent populations. According to this plot, Uzbeks can be modeled as a mixture of 66% Emperor Wu and 33% Russian. According to this plot, the Japanese can be modeled as 68% Emperor Wu, 25% Nganesan, and 5.9% Eskimo. According to this plot, the West Siberian Mansi can be modeled as 47% Emperor Wu, 21% Nganesan, and 31% Russian. According to this model, the Bashkir are a simple two-way split between Emperor Wu and Russians. According to this model, the Kazakhs are 93.75% Emperor Wu, 3.8% Ganesan, 1.8% Eskimo, and 0.5% Russian. I made another plot, but this time I set the divergency threshold to 35%. According to this plot, the Uzbeks can be modeled as 75% Bashkir and 25% Emperor Wu. The Yakuts can be modeled as 41% Ganesan and 58% Emperor Wu. The Kazakh can be modeled as 81% Emperor Wu, 14% Bashkir, and 5% Nganesan. The Han can be modeled as 72% Emperor Wu, 22% Nganesan, and 4% Eskimo. Similar models work for the Koreans and Japanese. Now let's move on to his trait predictor results. Emperor Wu was predicted to have dark brown eyes, black hair, light brown skin, curly hair, and a snub nose shape. He was predicted to be a warrior, lactose intolerant, to have higher D2 receptor density, low odds of autism, lower empathy, low odds of cardiovascular issues, low odds of epithelial cancers, intermediate odds of autoimmune disease, high homocysteine levels, high odds of obesity, and likely blood type O or A. He was predicted to have above average vitamin D levels, high LDL cholesterol and low HDL cholesterol, low glucose, average hemoglobin A1C, average blood pressure, average level of iron in blood, average level of SHBG, average red blood cell count, slightly shorter telomeres, and shorter than average height. He carried the A1-A2 genotype in TAC1, associated with reduced D2 receptor density and ADHD. He also carried the unathletic genotype in ACTN3's R577X variation. He carried variants that protect from HIV in HLAC. He was homozygous for the East Asian allele that is linked to dry earwax and reduced body odor. He was also homozygous for the Eurasian allele implicated in shorter sleep duration. He was homozygous for the allele associated with photic sneeze reflex. With trait predictor, he scored particularly high for odds of hemoglobin E disease, gout, AMD, myopia, bipolar type 2, multiple sclerosis, thyroid cancer, and testicular cancer. He scored low for odds of exfoliation glaucoma, cataracts, cardiovascular issues, Alzheimer's, glioma, and polycythemia vera. He carried rare risk variants for familiar hypercholesterolemia, ADHD, Parkinson's disease, and Gilbert syndrome. With beta-calc, he scored particularly high for odds of esophageal cancer, multiple sclerosis, obesity, stroke, and type 1 diabetes. He scored low for odds of autism, colorectal cancer, coronary artery disease, depression, hypertension, lung cancer, ovarian cancer, Parkinson's disease, prostate cancer, skin cancer, and type 2 diabetes. You can purchase Emperor Wu's raw DNA file in 23 and me format from the link in the description of this video. There, you will also find links to purchase my tools and services.